Okay, so I think right off the bat, if you want to go ahead and describe Karen to us. Uh, yes. So Karen is 47. She's average height white woman with a definitely grown out dirty blondish bob. Um, she has two kids and they're both terrible. Uh, and a husband who doesn't know how to cook. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I I haven't really thought a whole lot about what she wears. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from a lot of black and yellow, because her uh her nickname from her old tribe is the Wasp. Ah, I see. So, uh, the tribe that you joined, which one is that? Kitchenware. Kitchenware tribe. Okay. But she's a she's a loner now because she left to go and find the manager. Ah, okay. Uh, in that case, I think let's go ahead and start from before you became trapped in the infinite Ikea uh, and sort of figure out how you got into here then. All right. Sounds good. So in the brief like monologue bit I wrote here, uh, I had initially put in uh, that she might be a bad tipper, but uh, Karen is more of the type to be more of a, a generally kind-hearted Karen. She is resourceful and uh, will want to talk to the manager to try to figure out her situation as best she can, but she's not necessarily uh, inherently rude to other people. No, not inherently. She mm-hmm. probably would be the kind of person who like wouldn't tip if someone was rude to her, mm, gotcha. but she probably just tips normally otherwise. And uh, she doesn't have certain uh, prejudices that we've seen that a a lot of Karens in pop culture might have. So she's not (laughs) not quite. We're not playing a racist in this podcast. Don't worry. God, no. (laughs) Cool. Okay. So Karen, soccer mom, uh, potential bad pip, bad tipper, excuse me, and uh, the finder of managers. She has uh, an uncanny ability to pick out the most important person in the room and uh, is able to gently demand of them that they uh, give her what she is due as a loyal customer, um, or at least what she perceives she is due. Yep. The home store in the past has crossed Karen one too many times, uh, and the final straw was uh, there was a sale on like some buy two, get one free rugs. Uh, There was a sign up for it, and the manager said that the sale ended yesterday, and that's just going against every fiber of Karen's being. That's Um, just, that's false advertising. We can't have that. (laughs) Note to the listeners, the manager handled the situation very well and got a uh, (laughs) hefty raise for their troubles uh, that I narratively doomed them to. So Karen uh, decided to take her business to a different store that was going to appreciate her more as a customer. A continued note, this is satire. Please don't uh, be like this. Uh, Karen's neighbors, uh, James and Sean, uh, they had such nice rugs. Uh, so naturally, whenever this situation happened, uh, Karen reached out to them and asked where they got their rugs from. And they kindly told her that, uh, they went to the wonderful world of Ikea. Uh, Karen got online and looked through Ikea's catalog of rugs and got so excited that she, uh, immediately purchased some, uh, and had them started, uh, delivered to her. But uh, wouldn't you know it, the rugs got lost in shipping. So uh, naturally, Karen started fuming after a few weeks of no word about where the rugs could have wound up at. She marched down to the post office and demanded to know where uh, everything had gone. But uh, no, don't don't do this. Either. You get the point. <laughs> Uh, so Karen decided she would take her minivan uh, down to the local Ikea store and uh, try to convince them to give her the rugs that she purchased uh, from there and just to move on with her life. So uh, what minivan do you think that Karen would have? I had uh, picked out like the Mercedes MPV. It's an all electric minivan. Um, I, 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 appre- I appreciate your contribution, mm-hmm. but it has to be a matte black Honda Odyssey. It is a matte black Honda Odyssey, understood. <laughs> Which is a car I saw in my university's parking lot once, and I've never <laughs> forgotten about it. I feel like there's a potential story behind this Odyssey, but we can, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you uh, take your freshly filled up uh, matte black Honda Odyssey uh, down to the local Ikea store, and as you're driving up, uh, there's a like a, 
on the drive up to the IKEA store, there's like a little security booth there for some reason, which seems odd for a IKEA to have, but uh, you drive up to it and the uh, bar is pushed to the down position at the moment. Uh, and you, there's a security guard like motioning for you to like roll down your window. Uh, uh, hi. Yeah, the, uh, the Aki is under construction currently. Uh, you'll have to, have to come back another time, I think. Oh, um, actually, I'm just looking for, uh, I purchased some items on your website, and I know even if the store is probably under construction, I'm, I'm sure that you have a center open for deliveries. Um, I would really like to talk to somebody who could give me some more information about where my rugs have gone because you see I ordered them several weeks ago and they still have not arrived and I can't seem to get a hold of anyone who has any real answers so could you just help me out and get me someone who can give me some more information okay could you uh roll to manipulate someone for me please yes so uh roll 2d6 and add your charm which is plus one Dice, dice, dice. Okay, so two, six plus one is seven. Okay, uh, so that's a mixed success. So I think that uh, this person like says, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and call up my boss, but you're just gonna have to to wait right there for now, I guess. Oh, I'm I'm very used to waiting at this point. This has taken way longer than it should have. You seem not at all passive aggressive about this at all, huh? I I'm sorry. I just I ordered them so long ago and I've been trying so hard and no one will give me any any good answers. I'm a little bit frustrated. I'm sure you understand. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be Yeah, yeah. I I get it. Like I've I lost some uh really expensive stuff in the mail last year too. Like I that's great. Can you talk to somebody for me? Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, radio uh, my, my, my boss right now. So as you're sitting here looking around, you continue to uh, observe the area around you. You don't see any of the construction that this person mentioned before. And you also don't see any like construction vehicles. Everything looks like the IKEA is pretty well built did the guy in the uh in the security thing leave uh he's he like closed the window and turned around and is like enthusiastically talking into a radio okay i'm just gonna wait for a second but he's uh not he's not facing your direction yeah he'd like turned and then further into like the parking lot area there aren't any like there's a few vehicles but it looks like a couple like black van type of thing and there's like uh -huh. some trailers that are set up out in the parking lot as well just kind of looks like something weird and as you think more and more about how weird this situation is you think like uh, did did james and sean like try to hoodwink you here were they just like we we don't want her to have the same rugs as us mm. so they they directed you to a weird store i feel like you need more answers so he he closed his window <laughs> yes i'm gonna lean out of my window and like tap on the glass okay uh he uh turns back around and like opens up the window yeah, excuse yeah. me hi hi again um so i i noticed that there's not any construction equipment actually out here and i was wondering um if you can tell me where exactly the construction is because it doesn't look like it's the whole building. So is there any way I could just go inside for j just long enough to get some answers from somebody? It looks like there's not actually much going on. Uh, I, um, well, um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, if you, the, oh, the, the construction's on, like, the, the other side of the, of the store and, and mostly on like some of the the inside i i get i guess you can um yeah you can just pull up towards the other cars that are over there i i guess great I'll, I'll... thank you so much oh okay yeah um just just wait in your car for 
for uh, some people to, to come get you. And he's lifting up the gate, still like trying to tell you to like take it easy. Thank you. Awesome. Thank uh, you yeah, so yeah. much. And I just drive through the sure. gate. <laughs> okay. So as you're driving up, you uh, see off on like the right side where the parking lot area is, uh, there are the, the cars that are parked there that he told you to drive towards. Um, and off on the left side, you see like several garage door type entrances uh, along the side. It looks like sort of like a loading dock area. Um, and one of the doors is actually open and for some reason, no one is around. Well, the loading dock is probably where they would have stuff that has been shipped, so I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. So uh, you drive up to that area there, and uh, you see, like, into the store, and it looks like uh, there's a lot of different merchandise in there. Like, there might be some rugs further in. I think that bringing your minivan into the store and just pulling it up right up to the rugs will... uh, be the easiest way for you to get your merchandise and get out of here. Yep, sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. Perfect. So you drive up into uh, the IKEA store here, uh, fully committed, and it probably would be a good idea to bring it in anyway, so that no one notices that a minivan has pulled up into the parking lot here and tries to question that as well. So you drive up on in there. Uh, as you drive into the store, you are looking around. Uh, looks like the immediate area you drove into is more of like bedding and stuff so you drive a little bit further and the next aisle down looks more like kitchenware type stuff and then the next aisle looks more like lamps and uh, wait am i driving my car around the ikea you're just going straight in and there it's like uh the shelving that's in there is uh spread far enough apart that you can like easily drive into there yeah, and I figure if it's probably empty because it's under construction, so no one's, you know, yeah, gonna no one's really even going to notice anything. And you were completely right. Just there's kidding. get out, be on my way. There's so much merchandise that's already in here, and you drive up further, and oh, you eventually find the rugs. So you hop on out and look around to see if anyone is around, but. You look around, and as you look back in the direction that you came, it's just more shelving. You don't see the garage door that you entered from. Um, I'm going to investigate a mystery. Okay, go ahead. Uh, roll 2d6 and add, add your sharp. Okay, that is 1 plus 6 plus 1 is 8. So, investigate a mystery. Uh, with a 7 to 9, you get to hold one. You get to ask one of these questions. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What was being concealed here? I'll do what happened here. Okay. So, as you uh, sort of double back a bit to investigate what happened to the garage door that you just entered from, like, a couple minutes ago, you look down further and further and you see that where you could have sworn that garage door was is an additional row of shelving that has more merchandise sitting on top of it. And beyond that is more. It's a lot of kitchenware that has now uh, propped up there and you don't, you don't see like the entire wall that had the garage doors that you entered through. Unbelievable. And as you look around more and more, you see that the ceiling is actually really, really tall, too. Like, hundreds of meters tall. It is massive, and you look around more and more, you maybe step up on top of your minivan in order to look around, and you don't see a wall anywhere. You see some massive pillars that are holding up the ceiling that is so high that small clouds have been able to form. And you're stuck in the infinite Ikea. <laughs> what, are my, what are my neighbors' names again? Uh, they are... James and Sean. James and Sean, yes. James and Sean. Classic James and Sean. <laughs> <laughs> cool. They, they were definitely out to get you. They didn't want you to find those... Oh, wait, the rugs that they had are on the shelf right there. Huh. 
But conveniently, yep. none of the ones that you ordered in particular, because you didn't want to get matching rugs. You already knew better than that. No, of course not. None of the ones that you ordered are on this shelf. I'm an individual. None of the ones that I ordered? What? <laughs> nope. There so... are hundreds of them, not even the wow. <laughs> Gonna have to gonna have to file a complaint about that. <laughs> lots of lots of complaints to be had for IKEA. Oh yes. So to sort of streamline uh, the rest of Karen's time uh, up until the present, uh, she spends a couple months within the infinite IKEA. She uh, takes her Mercedes. Or sorry, uh, I need to write down the <laughs> the car. You Honda got. Odyssey. <laughs> Honda Odyssey. Yes. Yes. So she takes her uh, Honda Odyssey and sort of just starts driving in one direction, uh, continuing through the kitchen area uh, that you have uh, come upon here. Uh, You eventually run into a group of people who are dressed in what looks to be like armor that has been crafted from the different kitchen accessories that are here. They have on cookie sheet, like, tray chest plates uh and they've affixed colanders to their heads as helmets uh it's very much fully armored and prepared for battle dress for these individuals that are wearing just kitchen accessories you learn that the name of this tribe is uh the kitchen accessoria tribe they're able to tell you that the different tribes within uh the infinite ikea here they've had some interactions with Uh, Kitchen Accessoria is one of the largest of these tribes. You don't know where to get your rugs still, unfortunately. Uh, This area that they lie within is primarily kitchen accessories, so you've sort of come to the wrong area, but you decided to stay with them a bit longer in order to get some information and maybe figure out which way to go to find your rugs and maybe find a manager you could talk to that would know what to do. Uh, They try to tell you something about, like, the employees are different. They're not actually, like, real people or something. But you imagine that no matter what, there has to be somebody in charge. And Karen knows exactly who to talk to and where to go to try to find the person in charge. So uh, you spend some time with Kitchen Accessoria. You, while you were driving, sort of recklessly trying to figure out where to go, You wound up using up some of your gas, so you're about down to, like, three quarters of a tank. Uh, They tell you that you could maybe try to go to uh, the automotive section if you could find something. There could be some fuel there that you could use or or something that you could substitute. But, I don't know, Karen seems like the type to only put, like, top-grade petrol into her very expensive Honda Odyssey in order for it to run as cleanly as possible. Uh, Probably, yeah. (laughs) But uh, you stock up on as much as you can before deciding to uh, depart with the Kitchen Accessoria tribe. Uh, In your time there, since you were wearing uh, garb that was mostly yellow and black and had a bit of a sharp tongue uh, and were quite useful in adventuring and discovering and not necessarily looting, but uh, getting resources uh, for the tribe in your short tenure there. Uh, Because of your yellow and black uh, scheme, they decided to nickname you the Wasp. So, Karen, a.k.a. the Wasp, heads off uh, towards where she has been told is the best place to potentially find some rugs. Uh, It's a living room section that's not entirely too far away from the Kitchen Accessoria tribe, uh, and you begin to drive off. As you are heading further into the expanse of the infinite Ikea, it eventually turns to nighttime, which you have become familiar with. This just means in the infinite Ikea, the lights turn off, and you're not able to see as much other than a dull red uh, light that illuminates the area. You're able to move quickly enough in your Honda Odyssey that you can generally avoid uh, any of these employees that you've been warned about, and as Karen continues driving through the night, you eventually see up in the sky further ahead of you 
in the direction you are heading towards, a flare is shot into the air. All right. I'm heading toward that flare. And we will stop there.